Hi, and welcome. This is the Jelvix channel, and I'm an anonymous Jelvix developer. Why anonymous, you ask? Well, public speaking is not my thing, but coding is. Therefore, in this video, I'd like to share my 10-year experience at Jelvix as a software developer and give my honest review of Java and Python efficiency based on a real-life scenario. And make sure to watch the video till the end to find out what's my ultimate rating of them. Let's get started. Now, imagine our goal is to develop a financial trading system for a large investment firm. The mission here is to ensure reliable operations, handle high transaction volumes, and safeguard complex financial data. To cover it all, we'll consider five key criteria. Performance, robustness, concurrency, scalability, and security. First things first, performance. As we know, in financial trading, every millisecond counts. Viewing Java, it has an efficient runtime environment and JIT compilation for handling real-time data processing. It will allow for uninterrupted real-time trading. However, the Java virtual machine suffers from a drawback called Stop the World Garbage Collection, where the entire application pauses during garbage collection cycles, affecting real-time performance. To tackle this, options include selecting the right JVM, configuring its settings, optimizing garbage collection to reduce pauses, and even tweaking the JVM internally. But what about Python? Let's take a closer look at the codes. In both implementations, I recursively calculate a sequence. However, due to the inherent performance differences between them, executing this code in Python is noticeably slower compared to Java. Now, this happens because Python is an interpreted language, meaning each line of code is translated into machine code and executed by the Python interpreter at runtime. As a result, Python's recursive algorithms like Fibonacci can suffer from performance issues due to the overhead of function calls and memory allocation. However, bear in mind, not all cases might fall under this scenario. Python offers various implementations, each with its unique characteristics. CPython, JPython, IronPython, PyPy, MicroPython, StacklessPython, Scython, ActivePython, Jythonit, Grumpy, Shedskin, Brython, and CircuitPython. These and other implementations offer developers choices tailored to their needs, balancing performance, compatibility, and usability. Unlike Python, Java has a compiled language, first translates the source code into bitcode, which is then executed by the Java virtual machine. Thanks to its efficient runtime environment and CPU-bound tasks, it turns out faster than Python. So based on this, I give five for Java and four for Python. Yet, there might be a twist. While interpreted languages are typically slower than compiled ones, factors like JIT compilation, JVM warmup, startup time, concurrency, and stack overflow errors need consideration. Performance evaluation in each scenario is crucial. Now onto robustness, which is vital in financial systems to avoid losses and ensure a high reputation. So let's see how Python and Java can handle it. In Java, the threading model allows for true parallel execution of threads, enabling better utilization of multi-core processors. Now, in this case, I use synchronized blocks to ensure thread safety and prevent race conditions in my concurrent Java program. For instance, I have a counter class with a synchronized increment method, ensuring that only one thread can modify the count variable at a time. This will help me achieve robustness and reliability. When it comes to Python, its incremental element is global interpreter lock, which constrains my bytecode execution to a single thread at any moment even on multi-core systems. As you see, even though I create multiple threads that appear to run concurrently, they cannot execute Python bitcode simultaneously. However, it can be compensated with multiprocessing for CPU-bound tasks and a Syncio library for IO-bound operations, as you can see on the screen. Hence, I'd give both Python and Java the same robustness rate. Summing up the concurrency models, Python's Asyncio and Java's complete table future are similar to each other. However, due to the global interpreter lock, Concurrency in Python can be slightly harder to achieve. Hence, five goes to Java and four goes to Python. Yet, while concurrency can be sacrificed in financial systems, in other cases where real-time data processing is not required or transaction volume is not high, the need for concurrency can be minimal and Python will do the job just fine. Such cases include static content websites, small-scale e-commerce stores, or offline data processing tools. All right, but what about scalability? Well, both Java and Python can efficiently handle increasing demands. However, Java's complete table future and Spring Hibernate are believed to offer more mature solutions. Python integrates robust security features directly into the application's code base, often requiring more manual setup, but offering greater simplicity and flexibility, especially for smaller applications. Frameworks like Django provide built-in security features, but developers typically manage security configurations within the code, offering more direct control over security logic. It enables quicker development cycles and easier debugging though it may result in less separation of concerns compared to Java's framework-based approach. Now, if you're a beginner developer, you might ask, which of them is more user-friendly? I got you covered. Commonly, Python is a more popular choice for beginners, since Java with its verbose syntax and stricter typing system might pose some extra challenges. Oh, and I almost forgot. Community-wise, Java's been around longer, 
Hence, a vast array of libraries, frameworks, and tools for various domains. And yet, Python's ecosystem is also actively growing and by far has been able to catch up with Java thanks to its greater versatility. Not to mention Python's machine learning, AI capabilities, and statistical computations, enabling it to replace Java in a range of fields, requiring rapid full stack and backend development. Well, that's a wrap. Here's a brief sum up to help you navigate the differences. Pause the video to read it. Next, I recommend watching our video on top Python frameworks. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.